Welcome to another Mythologer video. Let me show you something really amazing. How to solve an equation by playing laser tag with a turtle. That sounds very strange but just wait and see. Okay, here's an equation. Here's our pet turtle and here's my laser tag gun. Here's the turtle at its starting point facing to the right. The leading coefficient of our polynomial is 1. This tells the turtle to walk one unit to the right. Now he makes a quarter turn in the counterclockwise direction. He's now ready to go up. The second coefficient is 5, which tells the turtle to advance 5 units. Yes, yes, I know it's a very speedy turtle. Probably doesn't like the look of that laser. <laughs> anyway, another quarter turn counterclockwise. The next coefficient is 7. Advance 7. One last turn. The last coefficient is 3 and the turtle finishes his trip by advancing another three units. Now we place our laser at the starting point and aim to attack the turtle. But of course a straight shot wouldn't be very sporting. So like billiard players of old, we'll try to zap the turtle with a bank shot like this. But our bouncing rules are special. We have a weird laser that always bounces off making a right angle like this. And again, Missed, but by angling our laser shot slightly differently, we can arrange a hit. There, great fun, except maybe for the turtle. But what's the point? Well, believe it or not, we've also found a solution to our polynomial equation. It turns out that to make the killer shot, our laser beam began with a slope exactly equal to one. And for the game we are playing here, it turns out this promises us that minus one is a solution of our equation. Don't believe me? Let's check. Let's see. All right. Five plus three, that's eight. Minus one, minus seven, that's zero. Okay, let's allow the turtle back into the game. That's a cubic equation down there. So hopefully we can find another solution. And it turns out we can. Tilt the laser a little more. Okay, keep going. There, a second hit. Here the initial slope is 3, which means that minus 3 is a second solution. And yes, there's also a third solution, but we'll worry about that later, okay? Surprised? I sure hope so. I definitely was. And with suitable adjustments, our turtle laser method works for any polynomial equation. What are the adjustments? Well, obviously, a higher degree polynomial will require more segments in the turtle's path. But as in our example, the turtle always, always makes a counterclockwise quarter turn after each segment. Also, the turtle deals with a negative coefficient in our polynomial by walking backwards instead of forwards. For a zero coefficient, the turtle doesn't move, but he still makes a quarter turn for this zero segment. Now, one thing that may go wrong is that the next turtle segment may not be long enough so that the laser beam will miss. We take care of this by allowing the beam to bounce off the full line extensions of the turtle segments. Have a look at this. So there it misses but bounces anyway, bounces and also ends on one of those extensions. It may seem a little strange to allow this. On the other hand, you've already accepted speedy turtles and weirdly bouncing lasers. So it's definitely a little late to start objecting now. Anyway, trust me for now and just run with it. You'll see it all ends up being quite natural. So why does this crazy system work? Let me now take you on a tour of the bizarre mathematical world of turtle tech. This turtle shooting game is called Lil's method, named after the Austrian engineer Edward Lil, who discovered the method about 150 years ago. It seems that Lil's method was quite well known for a while, but it is now largely forgotten. I learned about it from a very nice article by Thomas Hull, a mathematician who specializes in origami mathematics. We'll get to the origami angle soon. As for the turtles, I imagine a number of you have already guessed how they got involved. If not, just Google turtle graphics and all will be clear. Anyway, as far as I can tell, it was also Thomas Hull who was the first to employ turtles to explain Lil's method. I've set up this web page over there so you can play with Lil's method. The link is shown at the top and also in the description of the video. 
on input of the coefficients of a cubic polynomial it draws the corresponding turtle path. You can then aim your laser by dragging the mouse there. Really quite stunning isn't it? Let's now have a closer look at the changing numbers at the top. At the top is the polynomial p of x whose zeros we are hunting. We've shot the laser at a positive slope of about 0.28. Then evaluating p of x at minus that slope we get about 1.4. Close but no banana. Now and this is super cool 1.4 etc is exactly the distance between the blue and red points. I'll give the super super cool proof near the end of this video. So in effect what we're doing when we shoot at the turtle at some slope is to evaluate the polynomial at some point x and then we graphically adjust things until p of x becomes zero. Of course p of x can also take on a negative value which in the picture would look like this. Okay I think we can all agree that just on its own solving equations by shooting turtles is really really cool but there's lots and lots more. What I want to do now is show you some of the super cute features and applications of this method. That includes a clever way to reinterpret the turtle shooting to get free solutions to closely related equations and a slick way to solve quadratic equations by simply drawing circles and an ingenious way to solve cubic equations using origami and some super efficient rapid fire iterative turtle shooting. And finally I'll also show you a very surprising very beautiful and apparently new incarnation of the super famous Pascal triangle. And of course this is mythology and so along the way I'll also show you some proofs of how all this works. Quite a program but we'll go at a turtle's pace. That pace. <laughs> okay well anyway I'll begin with the simpler ideas and then go on to the ever more challenging. Feel free to bail or begin to skim when things get too scary. Okay off we go. Here's the cubic again and the two ways we found of shooting our turtle to give the solutions minus 1 and minus 3. Let's flip the picture vertically. Alright this flip diagram translates into solving another closely related equation. What's the equation and what are its solutions? Well our turtle knows it all so let's just chase it around the pass. Okay the turtle is on its way and again begins by walking one unit to the right. Then the usual counterclockwise turn but that means the turtle walks backwards on the next stage. Therefore there's got to be a minus sign in front of the five. There. Turn again. Okay the turtle's facing forward again and so we can leave the plus sign in front of the 7 in place. Turn once more. Backwards again and so the sign has to change again. So we know the equation for the flip parts but what about its two solution? Well because of the flip the starting slopes of our laser beam are just the negatives of the slopes we had previously and that means that the solutions to this new equation are plus 1 and plus 3 the negatives of the original solutions. And of course this works for any polynomial equation. Changing every second sign in the polynomial the solutions to the new equation are the negatives of the original solutions. Very cute huh? Anyway here's a first easy challenge for you. Try to find a turtle free proof of this fact. As always you can answer in the comments. Now by further flipping and rotating this diagram we get more free solutions and insights into other related equations. Here's a rotation that gets us to something pretty surprising. So your second challenge chase the turtle around this path and figure out the equation it represents. How are this equation and its solutions related to the original equation below and what's the general principle? Share your thoughts in the comments. So in my last video I tried to convince you that parabolas and quadratics are much more interesting than the aimless and tedious school exercises we all seem to have suffered through. Now here's some more evidence. 
a really really cool way to solve quadratic equations. Okay, here's a quadratic equation which happens to have solutions minus 1 and minus 2. A quadratic has three coefficients and so the corresponding turtle pass has three segments. And a laser beam solution consists of two segments making a right angle. Like that. But there is a very old and very beautiful theorem about right angles. And this theorem allows us to replace the trial and error approach of swiveling the laser with drawing a simple circle. You know the theorem? No? Well, maybe once did. Well, we'll find out in a second. Start with a circle, draw one of its diameters and pick a point on the circumference. Then this triangle there will always be right angled. Remember that? This beauty is called Thales theorem. Now watch this. Magic, magic, magic. <laughs> Very pretty, isn't it? And you can see what it does, right? It tells us that to solve the quadratic equation using the turtle path, we can just connect the endpoints, find the midpoint and draw the blue circle. Then the two intersection points tell us where to aim our laser and so also the solutions to the quadratic. How super pretty is that? Definitely makes my day when I learn about something like this. How about you? If you draw the turtle pass on a physical piece of paper, it is also possible to use paper folding based on Lil's method to solve quadratic equations. But there's more. Lil's method shows how you can also solve cubic equations with paper folding. This amazing discovery was made by the mathematician Margarita Piazzola Belloch in 1936. Let me demonstrate how this paper folding trick works using our cubic example from before. Here we go. Here's the distance from the final red point to the top horizontal line. Draw or fold another horizontal line the same distance above. There we go. Now do the same for this distance and draw a new vertical line. Okay, copy the final segment of the laser beam. And notice this copy can now slide snugly between the two horizontal lines. There it just fits. And we can do the same with the first segment of the laser beam over there. Time to begin folding. Take the paper and fold along the middle segment of the laser beam. Then because we've got a right angle here, uh, this laser beam segment will fold smack on top of its blue copy. And therefore the red point will end up on the green horizontal. Similarly, the black point will end up on the green vertical. Let's do this. There, oh, magic. <laughs> there the red and black points end up on the green lines. This means that starting with the path of the turtle, we can find solutions to our equation by folding the red and black points onto the green lines. Okay, let's do it. And unfold. Then the paper crease pins down the middle segment of a successful laser pass, right? And the rest is autopilot. Also a super nice construction, don't you think? And just in case you're wondering, here's our second solution. Great. And maybe you've heard people say that origami is more powerful than ruler and compass. Have you heard that? I don't have time to go into details here, but it is exactly the fact that paper folding can solve cubic equations that shows it's more powerful than ruler and compass, which can only handle quadratic equations. Okay, one more super nice property before I tidy up with some proofy details. Here's our cubic again. Recall that we found the solutions minus 1 and minus 3 corresponding to beam slopes 1 and 3. Of course, we'll come across all possible real solutions by sweeping the laser through all possible slopes. But there's also another iterative way of finding new solutions. To begin, find one solution as usual. Now forget about the turtle path for a minute and pretend that the laser beam path is a new turtle path. Weird, huh? Swivel your laser to find a solution for our new path. Now what's amazing is 
that this solution to our new equation is also a solution of our original equation. In this case it's the minus 3 corresponding to the slope 3. But why stop now? Let's do this one more time. Forget about the turtle path again and make the laser beam into a new turtle path. And here's a solution. That's another minus 1 corresponding to the slope 1, which as we know is also a solution of our original equation. Let's combine all our solutions into one diagram. So we get the same solutions as before. However, the solution minus 1 appears twice corresponding to the two green angles. Why is that? Well, when we have a close look at the polynomial it becomes apparent that minus 1 is a zero of multiplicity 2. In fact, we can factor our cubic polynomial like this. There, the green solution minus 1 has multiplicity 2. This turns out to work in general. The iterative method picks up the multiplicities of the zeros whereas the basic Lil's method does not. Very neat and also very, very mysterious. Why on earth should turning laser paths into turtle paths do what it does? I'll give some details in the proof at the end of the video. But just quickly, here's a sketch of what's happening. After finding the first green root minus 1, we get rid of one of the green factors down there. This leaves us with a quadratic and the second turtle path corresponds to this quadratic. After we find the blue zero of this quadratic, we get rid of the blue factor, leaving us with the single green factor. The final turtle path corresponds to this linear equation and it calculates the remaining green zero. Very pretty stuff. <laughs> Time to get down to the proofs. I'll now show you why Lil's method and its iterated form work. As an incentive to stick it out, at the very end I'll show you that very beautiful incarnation of Pascal's triangle that I discovered or perhaps rediscovered while preparing this video. Mathematical seatbelts on, here we go. I'll begin with a sketch of a proof of Lil's basic method, again focusing on our cubic. So what I want to show is that our cubic function evaluated at minus this slope is equal to the sine distance between the red and blue points. In order to do this we are going to successively figure out these four distances here. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, so that first distance down there is just the first coefficient which is 1, right? To calculate the other distances, notice that the same green angle pops up three times in the diagram. And the slope of the initial laser beam is just the tangent of the green angle. And then minus that slope is the input x for our cubic polynomial. Now remember your Sokatoa. The length of this yellow segment is 10 of the green angle times the aqua 1, which is minus x. Next, this blue side of the turtle path has length 5. Therefore, this aqua segment has length 5 minus minus x. Now, so Couture again, the next yellow segment has length 10 of green angle times 5 plus x, which is this. The next blue segment of the turtle path has length 7. And so the next aqua segment is this long. Oh, fancy, huh? <laughs> Repeating this calculation one more time gives us the distance between the blue and red points. There. And this turns out to be our cubic polynomial, just written in a very special form. To check that this really is our beginning cubic, we just expand. So once, twice, yep, that's our cubic. And so if we found an x to make this final aqua distance 0, then we've also found a solution to our cubic equation. And that's why Lil's method works. Ta-da! Magic, isn't it? But it gets even more magical. This special form of our cubic 
is called its Horner form. I still remember learning about the Horner form and a related mathematical miracle from Herrn Schwenkert, the amazing high school teacher who sparked what became my lifelong obsession with mathematics. That was over 40 years ago back in Germany. Yeah, I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a wonderful surprise to discover that at its core our turtle tag game is also just synthetic division. The Horner form miracle I was shown by Herrn Schwenkert all those years ago. Let me finish by telling you about this miracle, which then will also explain why iterating turtles work. In the first instance the Horner form gives a very simple and efficient way to evaluate the polynomial. Let's say we are looking at the specific value x is equal to minus 2, corresponding to an initial slope of plus 2. There. Then we evaluate the polynomial from the inside out like this. 1 times minus 2 plus 5, that's 3. Minus 2 times 3 plus 7, that's 1. And finally, minus 2 times 1 plus 3, which equals 1. So the lengths of our aqua segments are just the intermediate results of this super efficient way of evaluating the polynomial. However, and this is the miraculous bit, by calculating these numbers we've also performed what's called synthetic division. Which means that we've also divided our polynomial by x plus 2 in a very sneaky way. How? Why? What? Where? Hmm? <laughs> well, the result of dividing a cubic like this is a quadratic plus a remainder, right? Now it turns out that, and you should really check this, the three coefficients of this quadratic polynomial are the first three intermediate results of our evaluation, those three there. And that the remainder is the final equal number, so like that. So again, we can divide a polynomial by a linear factor by simply evaluating its Horner form. Pretty damn miraculous, isn't it? And just in itself a trick worth learning about and committing to memory for the rest of your lives, don't you agree? Now, for iterating turtles, the important case is where the linear factor corresponds to one of the solutions of our equation. In this case, the remainder vanishes like this. Almost there. The remaining solutions of our original equation are then the solutions of this quadratic equation. Whose turtle path is this? But as you can see, and as one easy bit of trigonometry proves, this quadratic turtle path has exactly the same shape as our cubic laser path. And that means that we can use the laser path to solve the quadratic equation. And that is why turtles iterate. Let it sink in. Got it. Very, very cool, right? And that's just about it for today. There were a few more fascinating aspects that I was tempted to cover, like for example the generalization of Lil's method to also find the complex zeros of our equations, the beautiful characterization of equations that correspond to closed turtle paths, and what happens when we bend turtle and laser paths at angles different from 90 degrees. Maybe another video. But for now, if you're interested, then check out some of the references in the description. To end, let me fulfill my promise and show you an animation of that beautiful turtle path incarnation of Pascal's triangle. I haven't seen it mentioned anywhere, so this may very well be a cute little original discovery. However, if any of you have seen it before, please let me know. Anyway, enjoy and bye for now.